Tio, Ana. <laughs> Cristina. Welcome, welcome everyone. Welcome uh, for more one uh, Iberamia live today. We have a very interesting talk. Thank you, Jean Pierre, for your talk. Cristina, please introduce our special. Invite today. Invite. Yeah. So welcome everybody. This is our fifth lecture. This is we have like a very special uh, <clears throat> invited speaker today, Jean Pierre. Thank you very much for accepting. It's an honor to introduce you. Uh, <clears throat> we have a very important guest. He's uh, <clears throat> right now he's a researcher at Puki Rio but he's a professor and a researcher at the Paris 6 at Sorbonne. It's so many names for the same place that I will stay with the Paris, Paris 6 uh, name of the university. And he's a, a well-known artificial intelligence researcher. He has a, a, a new book that uh, arrived last year that I'm sure that he's going to, in, to talk about that. And he's going to talk about the use of artificial intelligence, more specifically of deep learning, that is a technique that has been used all over the place right now for the creation of music. So in addition of being a researcher and a professor, <clears throat> Jean-Pierre is also a musician and he understands about language. For me, you know, uh, speaking French, Portuguese, English, and Japanese means that you understand about language. And music is also about language. So now you are translating the music language to computers. So I'm very excited that you accepted to talk in our, in our pre-event seminar. And I really hope that you will find your some time to join us at the Iberamia. I also want to, to remind people, Iberamia is going to be an in-person conference. So I, I want to, to meet all of you <clears throat> in November from the 23rd to 25th, uh, 2022 at Cartagena de Indias in Colombia that has a new government right now. So please welcome Jean-Pierre, the floor is yours, or the screen is yours right now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Christina, for this nice, very nice introduction. Thank you, Marisa and uh, Francisco and everybody to, uh, to uh, invite me here. This is a pleasure and a honor to be, to be here. So I will try to, yeah, to in 45 minutes to give uh, some kind of introduction and of... of uh, the, the issues and the, the, the techniques and the uh, f about the foundations for, for doing music, creating music with uh, AI and especially deep learning, yeah, that is uh, artificial neural networks because there, there are other techniques. So I will, uh, but I will focus more on deep learning, which is of course a hot, uh, hot topic <laughs> and uh, with uh, very impressive uh, uh, applications. So uh, I'm from uh, actually some uh, from CNRS, which is the Centre National de la Recherche Scientifique, and also from Sorbonne University. So actually, uh, 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 Christina, uh, Paris 6 doesn't exist anymore. It was fusioned with uh, Paris 4th, and now it's named the Sorbonne University. <laughs> so, <laughs> but of course, the, uh, it's. Uh, so and it's 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 the main uh, it's one of the main or probably the main uh, scientific university in uh, in uh, in France. It's in uh, Paris, uh, Paris, Paris. So and everybody is welcome to be there. And actually, the name of my lab is still Lipsis Lipsis Lipsis, which was for Laboratoire de Informatique de Informatique of Paris Six. So you see, there's still the 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 trace of the previous name <laughs> but we haven't changed the name of the lab although it's it's actually it's up to date with the 
the new name of the university. But anyway, so, and uh, as Christina said, I'm also a visiting a researcher, actually permanent uh, in, uh, at Pukki Rio, so I mean, between uh, Paris and, uh, and, uh, and Rio de Janeiro. So, uh, so let's, let's start. So, um, so I ch I'm changing the, the slide. Everybody, is, is it okay? You could see the change. The outline yes it's working okay perfect so let's start so uh, I, I will i will start uh, introducing a few examples in order to to uh to show some recent results and achievements using deep learning to do music uh, creation and then i will summarize quickly uh the the the, the foundations uh for for for, for doing so with uh, deep learning and uh, then I will do a quick reminder about uh, computer music uh, and uh, the, 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 the idea of not writing uh, by hand a, a model, a musical model for, for instance, for, for uh, melodies, for harmonization, for, for counterpoint, etc. but using machine learning in order to learn models. And uh, I will then go into the important issue of evaluation. How do we evaluate uh, creation by uh, computers? And uh, which will make me go into this, uh, this kind of fork between uh, uh, autonomous creation uh, engines and also on the other side, a uh, more collaborative uh, way while keeping the, the musician, the, or musicians within the loop to do some uh, more uh, incremental uh, music uh, construction, and then I will I will uh, I will finish with uh, issues more fundamental and technical issues and, and, and conclude. So let's let's start and let's start with uh, an example already uh, actually uh, uh, six years old, but which is. Uh, still recent so the idea is to uh learn from a corpus the corpus of uh the 350 and, and, and uh, uh back chorals from jean joan sebastian back that is there are four voices uh music polyphonic music uh, using a counterpoint uh principle and uh, the, by using a machine learning model, uh, neural network, uh, learning, this, uh, learning this style of composition, uh, you can create new music, actually, in the style of, uh, of a chorale of uh, Jean-Sébastien Bach. So let's listen to, to, the, to the one sample of uh, music created by the computer. So you see, you can see that it's a kind of convincing uh, uh, result, and uh, for most of people, it's uh, it would should be hard would be hard to say if it has been composed by Bach, the great composer, or by uh, by this uh, this computer model. So let's uh, let's show another example uh, of uh, this time uh, piano music, and uh, using another architecture. Uh, named Transformer, which is recent and uh, very much popular, and uh, for generating tasks, but also music and doing some uh, translation also. And uh, you will see that there is uh, even more um, performance uh, aspects of the, the, the music because the, the training 
the training corpus that is the examples of music used to train the the computer the computer model actually are from uh, real performance by a pianist a professional pianist which makes more human like actually the the interpretation in terms of change of uh, tempo and uh, of uh, the 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 strength also uh, of the of the notes etc so let's let's listen to some uh, sample Etc. I, I I stop here. So again, the the result is uh, rather uh, rather impressive in terms of uh, pianistic and uh, and uh, language. I mean the 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 the, the, the creation again is the, the machine which created it. So now let's these two first examples were using actually uh, starting from uh, scores musical scores. Uh, uh, of uh, back music or, or actually uh, in, uh, performance which was uh, uh, recorded in a MIDI uh, format by uh, by real pian pianist pianist so now uh, so they were using a symbolic uh, symbolic uh, level uh, representation of music but now there are, you have systems working with the, the sound the, the signal the wave waveform and you will show some examples of recent system uh, named Jukebox, who is working on the on actually uh, audio from, for instance, uh, Elvis Presley or Frank Sinatra music, learning the style of their music as, uh, and singing, and be able to generate some music in the style, for instance, of Elvis Presley, and having some uh, degree of control being able to to condition to actually control the the text that is the vocal the the content of the of, of the vocal and you will see that in the case of uh, Elvis Presley if you look at the, the text it makes uh, no sense from dust we came with humble start from dirt to lipid to cell to heart etc so uh, Elvis Presley never <laughs> never sung this kind of uh, nonsense uh, funny uh, lyrics, but uh, you will see it's uh, it's the, the the sound quality is not perfect as you will see, but it's it's also very impressive. From just to tell you, I will start the lift each tells the heart. With my toes lips, with my pale sister mine. And the last when he woke up with a mind. Um just a day, just a day help from get the two to get to rack. When his CT with the tunnels, they some beat. At last, etc. And uh, now I will show some example uh, in the uh, style of uh, Frank Sinatra. So it's Christian time. Oh, it's hot, hot tub time. Again, the lyrics are, uh, are not the standard lyrics. Oh, it's hot time. It's for spring time. And so no upset wings. It's hot time. Some people like to go still in the snow. But this, this is not 
So grab your bathrobe and meet it, etc. So uh, in in this case, you have also this this uh, way of controlling, uh, conditioning the, the the music and the the singing, actually the singing uh, on, on the lyrics, which is of course uh, interesting. It's an important issue that we'll uh, touch uh, upon uh, later on. This issue of controlling, not not just generating, letting the the computer create samples from a model but being able to parameterize, to control, for instance, in this case, conditioning on, uh, on lyrics. So another example, which uh, I guess is, uh, is uh, known by many of you, is the, the, the painting, which was sold uh, for a lot of money, because it was the first <laughs> deep learning uh, created uh, a painting. It was printed uh, with a 3D printer on a, on a, a real canvas. And it was made using uh, deep learning techniques, uh, actually a creative adversarial, adversarial sorry, uh, networks, which I won't, uh, probably I won't detail the, the technique here, but somehow it's, uh, it's, it's based on the, on the Turing test. As the idea is to train, to train uh, uh, the, the, the generation uh, to be closer, to be acceptable as a, as a fake, as a good fake, actually, by another, by another network, which is the, which uh, will check actually if it's uh, if it's a fake or if it's a, it's a real uh, it's a real painting, and uh, the, you train the generator and the the the, the other who's, which which uh, role is to uh, to to decide if it's uh, fake or, or non-fake. And the, the, the better they are trained in parallel, the, the, the generator learns actually to create really a fix which look real, which creates some problems actually, which are named the deep fix. And so they have been trained with uh, 15,000 paintings from different styles. And, uh, and uh, you can create various uh, paintings. And uh, there's some, uh, some, now there are some ways of controlling as well. And some uh, kind of uh, um, spin-off almost by, uh, by this kind of work is uh, an application that you can, uh, you have the, the uh, uh, HTTP address on the slide, is to, to tunify a picture. That is, you give your picture or picture of anybody, and uh, it will make, it will distort the, the, the attributes of, the, of your face in, to, in order to make uh, look like in a cartoon. For instance, I try, I try with my uh, my uh, picture uh, identity, a uh, passport uh, picture, and it makes this uh, this result. And all this is using uh, deep learning uh, techniques. So to understand how it's working, I will make a quick, very quick re uh, reminder of uh, artificial networks in two slides. So some of you already know everything. Some of you not maybe not completely, so it will be short. But I try to to explain for everybody to understand the idea. So actually, uh, a, a deep uh, artificial neural network is it's a, it's a it's a pipeline of layers, and each uh, layers uh, uh, actually is a logistic regression layer. And uh, so from the input, which are for instance in this case for recognition of uh, classification of image, every pixel will get into uh, one uh, entry uh, neuron, right, with corresponds. And then all the, the, in order to get to the second layer, one neuron, for instance, it will get input from all the previous layers, uh, uh, nodes, neurons, and with a weighted sun, that is all the, uh, all the connection will be weighted with some uh, numerical value. And actually, as we'll see, this value will vary during the training. So as a result, there is a massive computation going on, pipeline, uh, weighted sums. Uh, and at the end, the out, on the output layer, there are some uh, output uh, neurons, nodes, which correspond actually 
to, in this case of classification, if it's a cat image or a dog image or elephant image or whatever, uh, the probability of being recognized as a cat or a dog, or etc. For instance, in this case, current uh, 40% chance it's a dog, so which is the highest score. So that is the in this case the the, the network recognize this image as a, a as a dog, right? And the training, how does it work? It's actually very very simple. So you show some ex, uh, some uh, training example here, a dog, and the network maybe won't uh, won't classify it as a dog. For instance, it will give uh, the best value best probability, uh, most likely to be a cat. And then this is an error. So what we do then, we actually uh, propagate this error onto the connections in order to, uh, it's named the back propagation, to adjust the, the, the by uh, doing some optimization to minimize the error, to adjust the, uh, the connections. And then we uh, continue to train and train again until the, the network uh, gets uh, the best uh, answers for the training set. And then it's, it's supposed to generalize, that is to be able to classify well, unseen, yet unseen uh, images of cats, dogs or whatever. So that basically that's it. That's a very simple recipe actually. And so again, it's based on linear uh, regression and uh, logistic regression uh, machinery. And uh, it's this very simple recipe turns out to be very efficient, actually. And uh, for instance, in, uh, in 2012, uh, in, the competition, uh, in the competition about uh, image recognition, there was a team based on uh, deep learning uh, with, by uh, uh, Professor Hinton, uh, which really uh, crushed the competition. It, it won the competition with a, a big margin of, uh, as you see, the error rate of its model, deep learning based model was a 15% error when the others uh, competitors uh, were stuck on to a 20, uh, 26% uh, error. And, uh, and moreover, they were using uh, uncrafted features. That is, they had some explicit knowledge in order to guide the, 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 the recognition, which was not the case of this deep learning model, which is in, in that sense agnostic, that it could be, it could be trained with uh, any kind of uh, input, actually, image. And uh, so this was really the, the, the big start of this big uh, deep learning wave. And now it's used for, as you know, for translation, for uh, it's also speech recognition, for instance, with the, the uh, intelligence assistance, uh, Siri or Echo or Alexa, and also speech synthesis uh, when they speak, source separation, which has been a long, uh, deep problem, uh, and now which is solved by uh, deep learning techniques and music creation, text creation, image creation, video creation, etc. Creative contents. So again, the, the technique, the, the base of the technique is actually very, very simple. It's basically based on, uh, on uh, curve fitting and, uh, and uh, logistic uh, regression with uh, uh, gradient style uh, uh, descent to minimize the, the, the error. Uh, the prediction or classification error. But this simple recipe with lots of data and lots of computing power works actually very, very well. And also the, the techniques have been uh, refined with, uh, with, uh, uh, with techniques to, 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 to improve, the, to improve the, the learning, also to add some control, as I said uh, already, which, is, which will be interesting, important to, 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 uh, to control the, the creation. So let's go back to the example of the um, uh, Jean Sebastian Bach uh, music. Uh, and uh, let's try to generate a counterpoint accompaniment to an existing uh, melody, uh, just the way actually uh, uh, Bach himself did. That is, uh, is uh, he, he started from uh, uh, 
a song, a, a church song, actually, uh, uh, melody, and uh, created the three um, corresponding uh, voices, alto, tenor, and bass, to make some uh, choirs, to make some counterpoint uh, choral to be to be sung in uh, churches. And uh, so how? So we have as input the so, the soprano melody, the uh, the initial. Uh, arbitrary melody, and it will produce uh, at the output of the network the, the free uh, melodies, counterpoint melodies. So we need to think about the way to represent uh, music. And so the easiest way is named the piano roll. So it's an uh, imitation of the mechanical piano roll that is for every, every uh, line corresponds to a, a note, actually a pitch, as you see. And every column corresponds to some uh, minimal uh, time uh, time window, time event, event. In this case, a 16th note, right? And so when you have a, a, a black uh, spot, it means that the note, for example, E note is, uh, is played uh, on the third uh, step, right, et cetera. And so with this, we, with this encoding of, of, the, of the score, actually of this, we can input this information into the network and at the, uh, uh, produce the generation and the output, decode the information and put back into a MIDI uh, or over format uh, file. And let's see the, the result. Actually, I'm... Here I'm using the, the system of uh, deep back that I uh, showed already, which is actually more uh, better quality or more complex. And sorry, just to say that here, as, as an input, we selected the God Save the Queen melody, uh, which was used recently for the Jubilee of, uh, of the Queen. And, uh, and of course, which uh, back was not aware of <laughs> in his time. And uh, so this will be a, a counterpoint choral created from the, in the style of Jean-Sébastien Jean Bach based on the, the melody of God Save the Queen. So some specialists uh, in uh, musicology, oops, sorry, and, uh, and especially back will detect a few errors, a few strange things, but uh, but basically uh, the, the 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 result is very uh, very impressive, and uh, there are some uh, more com uh, complex, more refined uh, architectures models, uh, not just the, this fit forward very simple uh, model to generate uh, music or generate uh, creative contents. There are, the, for instance, the, the recurrent uh, models which allow you to generate uh, 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 length, uh, quicker length, uh, whatever length uh, content that is in an iterative way, note after note. And you have uh, autoencoders which give you a way to encode and abstract actually uh, information and decode it and to reconstruct it. And uh, that way you learn, you can uh, make the model learn some uh, abstract info, uh, representation, uh, move within the space of this latent, this uh, representation and, uh, and do some interpolation, etc., cetera, to, to generate, to control the generation. And you have uh, many more architectures that I won't detail uh, uh, now. 
And uh, in order to be able to navigate into this various kind of architectures and also strategies to, to, to do some uh, creation to generation, uh, you need some kind of uh, conceptual framework that's with uh, my colleagues, uh, Gaetan Ageres, who was the author of Deep Back that we just heard, and François Pachet. We wrote some book uh, recently uh, trying exactly to, to, to introduce and to understand the, the, the issues and uh, thinking about uh, selecting five dimensions, the first being the objective, that is depending if you want to to create some melody or some uh, accompaniment of polyphony, that is several notes at the same time, etc. chords, you, you, you can select this or that uh, kind of architecture and way of generation. Depending also on the representation you choose, more symbolic could be MIDI, piano roll, text, etc. Or you are using uh, audio, like we've in the case of jukebox, like with the Elvis and uh, Frank Sinatra, like uh, uh, songs, uh, which are uh, waveform, but could be a spectrum as well, Com kind of abstract, uh, compressed uh, uh, information, uh, audio through uh, some. Um, a Fourier transform, and uh, there are the requirements. That is, which if you want some uh, amount of incrementality to be able to generate not all at once, but to be able to regenerate uh, some parts without re uh, having to regenerate everything, and also to be able to uh, to generate in a non-deterministic way. That is, to create always new samples and also of variable length, etc. Then, because of that, you have to you will have to select different kind of architectures, and uh, at least them uh, some of them that are recurrent, long, uh, short term uh, um, uh, memory, uh, auto encoders, tact auto variational and auto encoders, uh, GANs, etc., and uh, different kind of strategy also with. Uh, 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 fit forwarding the, the the computation within the network, or doing in an iterative way, or doing some sampling, uh, etc. So, if you want to know more, please uh, could have a look at the, the book. There is also an archive uh, open uh, a version, actually, if you if you like. And uh, and actually, it's interesting to try to organize these different architectures, uh, like uh, for software architectures, by using some kind of basic uh, uh, operations like uh, nesting, uh, refinement, composition, and pattern uh, instantiation in order, for instance, to, to, uh, to show that actually uh, um, a transformer or uh, an architecture for, for translation, which is named sequence to sequence, so RNN encoder decoder is actually the nesting of a recurrent network within the encoder and the decoder components of an auto encoder. Don't worry if you don't get the, the um, all the details about the technique. Just I want to show the way that you can you can uh, uh, present actually uh, classify in a kind of more systematic way uh, complex architecture based on uh, on uh, on components actually and uh, transformation components of composition refinement etc so just a few words about computer music uh, that uh, it started very early almost at the same time as uh, computer science as well in the 50s and uh, 57. And they were the, the first uh, sound making by a computer was in 57 and also the first uh, composition uh, music that is a, a score created uh, by using actually a Markov chains and filtering rules to, uh, to do some, uh, to filter some constraints, to, to check some constraints about. And the, these rules and these Markov chains were written by hand by some uh, uh, computer scientists actually they were physicians because computer who are who are not really were just starting to exist and also musicians so let's listen at so uh, at, the, at the at the result just a little bit it is played and this is a very important point it is played by a, a, qu a quatuor by a quartet by real instruments so which makes it 
uh, more humane, more, more real, and also not uh, basic synthesized sounds. And also, it's, uh, it's kind of contemporary music, which makes it more difficult to actually uh, evaluate. So this was made in '57 by the computer, but again played by uh, by the by some uh, real quartet uh, musicians, instrumentists. So actually, uh, this was using uh, Markov chains and uh, and constraints, and you have also grammars that you could use, rules, uh, cellular automata, uh, planning, uh, and uh, and deep learning and artificial neural networks. The good, so you have various kinds of uh, models. The, the good points of uh, using Markov chains and, uh, and deep learning and neural models is that they can, uh, I will skip this, uh, you, can, uh, you can automate, the, you can learn from, the, from, uh, from examples and not just having to, to write down the, the model by hand, uh, which is very uh, tedious. And of course, uh, it's, it's difficult to make it right. So the idea with a machine learning technique is to to learn the style actually uh, from a, from a corpus of uh, musical examples, and uh, in theory it's completely agnostic. That is the the the, the machine learning, the model uh, is has no knowledge a priori about the the style of music. That is, if you learn from a collection of of pieces of blues music. Then it will learn the style of blues music. If it, if you give it serial music, it will learn actually. It will uh, the correlation and the rules of uh, serial music of dodecaphonics music. If you learn, if you put it as examples uh, examples of uh, baroque music, it will learn the, the the style of that composer or that set of composers. So it's very very generic. And said so the idea is that you can learn the melody, you can learn the style of the uh, the harmony, the counterpoint, orchestration, etc. Eventually, separately and combine. For instance, do some uh, some uh, Beatle-like uh, melody, but to to use some orchestration uh, from uh, uh, Jill Evans, for instance, a famous uh, jazz uh, uh, orchestrator, and uh, and uh, do some uh, for the for the lyrics uh, to do to to. To use the style learned from uh, Proust, Marcel Proust uh, uh, words, for instance, and for the for the video, and to use uh, uh, to use uh, uh, poof, what's his name? Um, uh, I, I got. Uh, um, but anyway, any any kind of uh, artist. So that's that's the uh, that that's the idea, and that's a good uh, aspect of using machine learning uh, model. Being a deep learning or another one. So the important issue is how to evaluate that that this, this kind of creation. So actually, uh, you can do like a Turing, uh, Alan Turing proposed with the imitation game. That is to present music created by Bach or music uh, created by the Bach uh, uh, computer model of uh, Bach uh, chorales uh, to some audience without saying uh, which is which, and to see if the, the audience, the, the listener, will be able to, to, to distinguish if it's uh, original back or, uh, or uh, uh, computer's uh, creation. And actually, it has been done with, for instance, with the back, this, uh, this chorale back in the style of uh, back. And uh, for instance, in a TV channel in... Uh, in, um, in uh, in uh, Holland, and most of the audience actually couldn't uh, couldn't uh, distinguish very well which was back and which was a computer, and only very very experts could uh, could have a better better guess. And again, in order to to like in uh, original uh, paper by uh, Alan Turing, which was proposing to use a typewritten 
uh, dialogue in order not to to use the bias of recognizing the voice of a person or versus a sound of a computer. It, the music is played by uh, by real uh, choir, real musicians, in order to uh, not to have this uh, this bias by uh, computer synthesized uh, sounds. The problem is that usually the audience is very impressed, but the, the real musician, professional musicians are not that impressed. They say, okay, this looks like a back uh, music uh, or another. But what's, so what? what? What's the interest of recreating uh, music in a style of, uh, of uh, people, uh, older music, even if it's great music? And, uh, and also, if you listen to music created by, uh, by computer, uh, the, first, the first seconds, the first half minute, usually it's, it sounds good. But after a few minutes, starts, there's some missing, some missing some uh, direction, some kind of structure, actually, which is a, a big, uh, a big uh, research uh, issue, actually, which is not solved yet. And uh, another point, more fundamental even, is that this, uh, this machine learning uh, technique is based on actually uh, learning a style. So that is to, and, and then to reproduce some uh, samples in that style, that is to be very conformant to the style. So it's, it's, it's good to mimic, again, some uh, composer, but it's not very good for originality, for creating something very more original. Which usually artists would want to want to do. So then you you have a, a big uh, a fork actually a path. Either you you try to please the, the the general public, which is the case of of most uh, current uh, systems, which are autonomous based. That is, they create music and it's good, for instance, for doing music for for documentaries, for elevator elevator music, etc. But the risk is that music is it could be boring after a little while and also very conventional. Well, when the while the the musician, the creator, human creator, he wants on the opposite, he wants something surprising, but at the same time meaningful, not just random. And uh, and uh, he wants also that the music created pleases him uh, at first before the before the public. So somehow <coughs> he would like, <coughs> I'm sorry, he would like the, the computer to propose him something uh, uh, in some style or at the border of some style, but uh, with some degree of or originality, a surprise. And that's something that he wouldn't have thought about uh, himself alone without the help of a computer. So in the first case, this autonomous music creation, there are already various uh, companies, startups, uh, working on that, uh, which create, I would say, uh, a bit uh, in a nasty way, uh, elevator music. That is music which is, could be very good for documentary, uh, vi small videos, for instance, Joop Deck which is one of the, these companies, was bought by TikTok. TikTok is famous for small videos for teenagers. And uh, so the issue of doing, adding some automatically some music on top of some uh, commercial or, or video and uh, with some way of, of parameterizing the, the, by, uh, from the, the kind of mood, of the kind of style you, you want to have. But uh, again, for, for real musician, it's not really uh, very interesting. And uh, actually, this issue of uh, 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 there's not, not, not much structure and also not so much creative. Finally, it could be if the musician uh, gets into the loop and uh, controls from the, the creation of the, 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 the creative contents, the music, sees it, uh, considers it as, as building blocks and in a way arrange it, produce it his own, his own way, then you can do something more, more creative. And that's, for instance, uh, what a band, uh, uh, electro, 
electro pop uh, band uh, named uh, their name is interesting young americans challenging the high technology yacht and they do they they did some experiments some album that was uh, is sold um, uh, using uh, technology uh, deep learning based uh, creation uh, uh, libraries of architectures by uh, Magenta, Google Magenta, Magenta being a project uh, from Google about uh, music creation, also text and image was mostly uh, music creation. And uh, let's let's have a look at at the result. So it's dance music, right? it's no more back music. And uh, the, the video has been created by Deep Learning. The, the words, the lyrics are also created by, uh, by, the, by Deep Learning. For so you can see, I want your, sorry. I want your phone to my brain. This is not very common uh, lyrics. I also want you work on my head. Uh, and uh, uh, I show, oops, sorry. The, so the, the, the lyrics are, are created from a, a corpus of lyrics of the band itself and also lyrics that they like for instance, by, uh, of uh, Leonard Cohen lyrics. The melody and the chords and the rhythm is the, the music elements actually created from a corpus of examples, which is just only music of previous CDs of uh, the band. So that is, they, 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 they work from their own music and not music from uh, outside of it. And uh, the sounds also, they use synthesizers to do uh, the synthesized sounds, uh, also using deep learning uh, techniques. But as you, as you heard, there also there's a human production. That is, there are singers. There are some uh, mus uh, some uh, some real instruments as well, including a uh, voice. So it's interesting because they decided to control very much the way they they were doing music. They decide to use only uh, the melody, the harmony, and the the rhythmic loops created from the by the by the system and by the computer. And they were just selecting with it, like doing some curation and rearranging, that is the order. And, uh, and they could do some transpositional change, that is changing the pitch, or etc. And uh, they had the production aspect, that is assigning a, a melody line to a bass, synthesized bass or real bass instruments, or a vocal, or etc. This, this kind of decision was theirs. But all the, the, the building blocks, the musical blocks, were only created by the, the computer. So it's a, it's a mixture of computer-generated blocks and assembled by uh, humans, actually, which is a kind of hybrid way of doing uh, music. And it turns out that for the, for the musician, actually, it's, it's more interesting. They like it much better than having a completely automated uh, creation. And this is named the IKEA effect by a uh, sociologist and economist that actually uh, people like uh, the better the products uh, when they, they, they participate in the, in the making. For instance, they like better a table that they, they, they mounted from a kit of, uh, of parts that you buy in, uh, at IKEA, for instance, than if you buy uh, uh, a table which is already completely uh, uh, done. For instance, an anecdote uh, is some uh, company which created some, uh, some um, recipe, some, um, some kind of content for doing uh, cakes. And they, they realized that at first they, 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 they sold this, uh, this, you just, had to add water, that's it, uh, and uh, put in the oven and made a cake, or even the, the, the water was already there. And then it didn't sell very well. So what they, they, they decided is to remove the eggs 
from the, the, the content and the consumer had to, to add eggs. And then the, the, that product sold much better. People like it very much and like better the, the, the result just because they, they, were, they participate by, uh, in, the, in the making the participating in making the cake and not just from uh, something already completely uh, done. So actually, this is an interesting issue also of uh, putting the musician in the loop. Not only it makes them uh, more, more, uh, more creative and more participatory, but also usually they, they like it better. So in this sense, we need uh, uh, environments for doing uh, creation of music in a, in a more uh, incremental participatory way. And I will show some example of, uh, uh, of environment known Flow Composer, which is actually uh, was not based on, uh, on deep learning, but based on mark of chains and constraints. But I will show, but actually it could be reproduced uh, with a deep learning technique and it's, it's on its way actually. So I'll sh just show some examples of using it. As Je fais quelques réglages, pas trop de notes. So you can select your, your style. For instance, 729 case, chansons américaines dans le style jazz. So jazz Je fais quelques réglages, pas trop de notes. Type Broadway and uh, 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 jazz standard uh, 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 music, right? Pas de notes courtes et pas trop d'accords. So you can control, that is if you want lots of notes, short notes or more uh, longer, longer notes. And then you sample... J'obtiens un premier résultat. So it's a, it's a lead sheet, that is, you have, the, you have the, the melody and you have the chords also. So if you don't like it, you can sample a new one. Puis un autre. Another one. Je garde deux mesures qui me plaisent. J'essaie un rendu avec des accompagnements qui sont dans la base. On peut créer son propre accompagnement. Je me rends mieux compte de ce que ça peut donner. J'ai modifié une note qui me semble so haute. Can, uh, adjust, Maintenant, j'applique le composer sur les mesures que je n'ai pas gardées. J'obtiens un résultat avec trop de double croche. And then it creates uh, uh, the, the rest of the melody and the rest of the chords. And all is incremental. Donc je bouge le slider vers you. longue note. And then you can, if you think there are too many uh, short notes, you can uh, longer notes. Je m'arrête sur une proposition. Each sweetie. You can also test the production, changing, uh, looking at me, selecting the, the sounds. Ce son là marche bien avec ce morceau. Pause. Cette mélodie et je change quelques notes. So you, again, you can edit, edit the chords, edit the, la corde de mi mineur 7 que j'avais trouvé est bien, mais je l'avance d'une demi mesure parce que sinon j'ai l'impression qu'il me bloque. Pas vraiment avancé, je change de note. Pause. J'efface finalement la fin, mais je garde la suite d'accords en modifiant le dernier. Remove some part. Et je relance composer sur And ces dernières can, mesures. J'ai un truc. Ask the system to create a melody based on some chords, or the, the opposite, that is, on, from a melody, create the, the corresponding chords. Pas mal, j'efface une note, et je fais un rendu. So it's a very interactive process, and usually that's the way a musician, real, real musician, real composers, uh, current composers especially, uh, Uh, are, are, are working actually. They are, they are refining and refining, and also they, they get inspiration from other music. And the result, for instance, it made uh, some album was made with real composers and musicians based on using this 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 environment. <laughs> So 
it's interesting that the melody is very uh, not 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 so common it was uh, created by the by the by the computer with through through this interaction and the the modulation the harmony also is is quite uh, interesting so the idea again is that the with the help of such kind of system the the, the musician can can uh, can actually reach some, uh, get out of his comfort zone and uh, get inspiration in, uh, in some uh, in interesting, uh, interesting ways. So uh, time is almost on. So just to, uh, to finish, I will show, I will get back to some uh, of the, the fundamental issues currently uh, uh, that uh, there's the issue of structure, the the the, the absence of long-term structure. So there's there's a lot of work, research work for for doing this, uh, having better long-term uh, 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 correlations. Actually, learning co long, longer-term correlations, or also uh, various hierarchies of structure. For instance, microstructures like uh, patterns, like uh, uh, harmonic uh, cadences and uh, also uh, longer term uh, structure like, like uh, parts of uh, of uh, of uh, of the music with uh, a part b part uh, with uh, uh, some uh, changes and uh, another one is uh, uh, control which is very important again if you want to to uh, to be able not to just create samples on some uh, learned style, but to be able to control your, your creation. And there's a lot of uh, architectures and techniques to, to work on this. Uh, uh, the creativity also, there are some, uh, so, but I think it personally more as a non-problem because I, I think this, the, 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 the musician, the human in the loop should be, should be there actually to to, to guide the, the, the system and to work on the, on the big picture and not just assume that the computer by itself will do some, uh, something creative. And the incrementality uh, interactivity, which is necessary to be able exactly to, to keep a, a human being in the, in the loop of the, the creation process. So for the incrementality, there are, uh, there's much, much progress being done. For instance, I show some uh, recent, uh, actually, uh, plugin uh, by uh, uh, Gaetan Agers, which is named the Piano in Painting application. So the idea is that yeah, you have an existing piece of piano, and you can remove some parts that you don't like, and you change and uh, it will in paint that is it will replace the, the, the removed part of course within the context of existing uh, music so you select region that you don't like and uh, you generate and it will regenerate something which will fit within the the context of the existing uh, part before and after And uh, uh, control is, a, is a, actually a real uh, issue in research. And there are many, many ways, approaches to, to do control by uh, working on the output, by, uh, by uh, controlling the sampling, by uh, working on the uh, 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 hidden uh, layers on the, the latent space, on, the, on, the, on working on this, exploring this space, on working on, on the other side, on the input, uh, that is to, to, to change the input in order to control to the, the output, have some uh, characteristics that you want, to, you want to, to, to get, to do some conditioning also to parameterization. So there are, there are many ways, and this is a very active uh, topic actually in the, in the community. And uh, there are still 
some other issues. The the, the problem of, uh, in general speaking, that the 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 in order to get a better model, people will will put more more examples of more CPU and GPU, which consumes a lot of, of, of uh, energy. So there are some works on trying to to get a good balance between the quality and the energy uh, spent. And uh, also to uh, once you the, the, the model has been uh, trained to in a way to condense it in order to have it uh, uh, a smaller footprint and also to work on a, on a, on a tiny hardware. And uh, this issue of the loss function that is unfortunately we have no loss function to to say uh, I want beautiful music. It's usually used to 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 learn some uh, to 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 control actually the 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 likeness of the uh, of the of the the production of generation, but uh, and people are adding more and more terms to this uh, loss function uh, in order to, to to get more more control and. Uh, and I will skip this because I'm already out of time. Just to conclude, uh, again, it's the, the, the recipe for, uh, for deep learning actually are based on very simple uh, mechanisms. That is uh, the optimizing, uh, minimizing the loss function. That is the error of prediction and classification. And uh, it works pretty well. But unfortunately, you can, uh, we don't have a loss function for just Good music, uh, so it's still the the the, the, the musician actually uh, responsibility to uh, to use well this these techniques to 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 do interesting results. Um, as I said, uh, the issues of creativity and structure actually could be considered as non problems if really uh, human beings, musicians, real musicians are within the the loop. Uh, but we need more and more interactive and uh, incremental systems. And actually, uh, deep learning uh, systems are quite uh, are quite heavy. So actually, this is a, a bit of challenge of making it more more uh, more incremental and more light, and more controlled. So Markov models uh, are still very interesting. That is, that, that even if deep learning, of course, is uh, tends to to conquer everything. And uh, as I said, uh, we are, I really believe in, in more uh, human machine uh, co-work, uh, co actually co-creation, and not just uh, having a, a completely autarcic uh, automata which to create uh, music on the on the kilometers of music. And we need to learn from a new age, that is how the musician, they, they they, they they understand they start to 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 use this uh, this kind of uh, machines machinery and uh, help for for creation and there are also of course this issue of uh, which would be uh, another talk the issue of copyright and uh, business models based on the music uh, that is who's the owner of the music if you consider a computer just as a tool just like a, a trumpet or etc. Actually, the, the 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 human musician is is, is still the, the 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 leader in the the, the creation, right? So uh, I'm done. If you want some more information, uh, you can have it from the from the book that I already is uh, mentioned. Uh, there are some uh, uh, additional reference right now and. And uh, and maybe yeah. And uh, anyway, you could replay uh, any time the the presentation and uh, see the the HTTP uh, uh, addresses to to play uh, the examples that I showed. Thank you. Thank you very much for your wonderful presentation, Jean Pierre. I have seen uh, many of your previous presentation. And I want to congratulate you that you compact, and I know that is a huge amount of information, and you could compare. It, it, it went a little bit further, but put a lot of information, and actually raised lots of questions. I'm going to <clears throat> to to make only like three questions, 
And I know that there are some questions from the audience, so I, I will let them. But first, um, you, you touch at your last slide, you, you talk about copyright, but I'm talking about the ethical issue of not who is going to own the music, but right now, when you are generating uh, music from the bar style, no problem because he's dead for a long time, so there is no more issue. But um, can you imagine like um, generating like Paul McCartney's style of music? So maybe he, he doesn't want you to do that. So there is a not not a, a, a matter of who is the owner, but you are doing like pleasure. You are doing some kind of unlawful things. This is the first. The second is a, is a more technical one. It's like uh, when a musician, and since you are a musician, you know that, and you are learning. So there are some some um, uh, restrictions about which key to play because of the proximity and also because of like uh, it hurts your your ear when you know when you do some kind of music. And if I understand, when you are a, um, a learner, when you are learning that, you you you're you're making your mind some connections, and this allows you to um, more easily to produce. Um, nice songs. So I have thought about using graph uh, neural nets so that would put like this dependencies uh, stated up front. And my third is about, um, you know, I have this feeling that, that the people that are working that trying to do like uh, uh, music generation as it was one one thing, and I think that you know, um, there are like Anita's style of music, Bai's style of music, jazz style of music, sort of very different styles. And maybe some listener of one kind of music will not like the other, so it's not like universal um, uh, experience. And my first question is Does your book? Are, do, do you have the, the code available somewhere? I'm very interested in, in, in continuing your research. So. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, well, thank you again for the opportunity and the, the question. So the first about uh, ethical, yeah, there's, there's, there's ethical uh, uh, aspect, but also uh, commercial and law aspect, which is about the plagiarism, exactly. And actually, uh, this is a real issue because, uh, uh, for instance, in the in the Berne Convention, which is still a, uh, which is old convention, the the one of the question is who's the owner? Is is the computer be able to be the owner of uh, of a music or a painting even before before the uh, the problem of copyright? <laughs> who's the owner? Because if you uh, who's the owner? Who is the, the one who, who created the examples, including the, the one who, for instance, if you learn all uh, Mac McCartney uh, music and just create a new uh, McCartney style music from it, uh, uh, McCartney is the owner, should be the owner of, the, of the, all the examples. But on the other hand, the sample which is created maybe doesn't have... Uh, more than two uh, notes, which are so it's not technically speaking a, a, a plagia. Uh, so it's uh, it's uh, but there's also the the the, the person who, who who engineered the the, the architecture, the model, and also the so the implementation, you know, of the platform. So who's who's the owner? That's that's an open question. The Berne Convention says that anyway, uh, it should be a human. And it should also not be just pressing a button. That it should have some uh, some kind of intention, some uh, you know, some uh, spark of uh, creation or originality, which is the way to to defend actually from a completely uh, yet for the moment aut automated uh, uh, creation. But of course, there's a lot of pressure and uh, uh, commercial pressure for 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 this. I can't. For instance, if you use Markov chains, uh, 
there's more tendency to plagiar, actually, plagiar, yeah. uh, plagiarism, because uh, the, it tends to, 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 to re recopy, actually, parts of the, of the corpus, especially if it's a first order uh, 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 Markov. Uh, uh, no, sorry, if it's a higher order. If it's a, a small order uh, Markov chain, uh, it will create interesting things and sometimes uh, just uh, run, uh, n'importe quoi, very, very, very strange uh, result. But sometimes, you know, a musician uh, in front of, <laughs> they like it because it creates some kind of run, some uh, non-expected uh, parts. Uh, but if you use a very high, uh, higher order Markov chain, then the problem it tends to recopy the, the, from the corpus, and then it creates a plagia. So, and in the, in the, in the, I'm not specialist about that, but it's an important issue in this issue of copyright. There have been some copyright uh, jurisprudence uh, only with three notes, a sequence of three notes. So you see, it's, you get very quickly into the plagiarism and uh, the, and for instance, there's some uh, research, we, we, what he did, he did a generation, a random uh, generation of all possible uh, combinatorial melodies, and he created, and uh, he put that on a hard disk, and he, and he, he, he pretends that through that, he, he, and he opens this, all these melodies to, the, to, uh, as, uh, to be uh, open uh, uh, in, in terms of uh, creative commons, so exactly to bar people to do some uh, action for for plagiarism uh, because he said I will have already created <laughs> this this possible memory. So it's really a big uh, a big issue. And uh, as you say, going back to your your question about the the ethical way, yeah, what's 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 the goods of of, of recreating a kind of. Uh, 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 Recreated or etc. Well, for for some, you know, for for instance, for musicology, it could be interesting, you know, to to it's a way to study, you know, the style and the way back or over composed by in a way. Uh, uh, so it's uh, but for for doing real new music, real music, it's of course it's not uh, it's it's not very interesting. Uh, it's it's more a way to to show that the technique is working on, but it's not very it's not an end. So it's uh, that that was the first uh, first question. The second, uh, um, uh, well, as as I showed very quickly, you have lots of in the in the computer music uh, literature and uh, domain, you have lots of models uh, using uh, uh, grammar, uh, generative grammars, graphs, using uh, using uh, using. Uh, um, uh, uh, I, uh, uh, genetic algorithms. Well, so you you can uh, you can use and mix actually techniques. Sometimes you you actually people do mix actually techniques, or they use different techniques for different parts. For instance, for the rhythm or for the for the. And one of the issue, as you know, in AI, is to be able to mix this kind of. Uh, uh, non-symbolic and uh, more stochastic uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, techniques with some knowledge, with some explicit knowledge. How to insert some explicit knowledge into the into the into the sub-symbolic uh, machine? And there are some ways to do it. For instance, through the through the loss function to do some control and to uh, it's 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 an open issue how to how to incorporate both uh, symbolic and more abstract high level knowledge with with this kind of low more sub symbolic uh, ways of uh, of learning and of generation so i don't know if i, I answer well your your question yes and, you do oh thank you the, and do the, you and about the third question about the stars yeah of course the, I, I as i said in the in the start a good point of this using these machine learning techniques is they are they are they are agnostic. That is, they don't have a prior uh, model and uh, hypothesis about the style of music. If you if you train them with uh, 
with blues music, they will they will learn blues music. If the, you train them with uh, dodecaphonic serial music, they will learn the, this. So you can, uh, depending on the style, so the, the issue of choosing a style which should be, uh, which could be in a way uh, consistent, sufficiently, but not too small, but not too wide. Otherwise, it's if you put everything, it won't be able to learn. You know, it's like learning from random uh, information. So the, this issue of curation of of selecting. The, the the corpus for for the example is actually very very important but once you do that you can imagine actually you can work on, on doing some kind of uh, chimera so doing some, some mix of styles you know doing some uh, uh you can mix up uh, models actually that's 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 uh, that's the idea and for the for instance right now i'm working with uh, bruno fejo a colleague in uh, at Puki, who's working on the games. And one of the issues is to do some uh, music generation on, on real time, accompanying the game, because, uh, mm -hmm. and some, uh, and, uh, and s s I, uh, I've been told by some colleagues that many of the young, uh, the, the kids who are playing games, they don't listen more to the music generated by the game, they, they listen with uh, earphones for the with the music they like so actually with machine learning technique you can personalize the music uh for a specific gamer there is if a gamer likes i don't know anita's music or whatever you could learn from that and create the, the music on the fly based on that uh, style he likes but control it of course to uh, to adjust to the to the game so that's the idea of the project. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Thank you. Thank you. I think I uh -huh. try to answer. <laughs> more, more questions, Francisco? Oh, yes, one uh, question uh, from uh, the uh, audience. Uh, one question. No, Little P bring to my memory my studies uh, a little bit long time ago uh, with just track and uh, also they work. And I, I was, I would, I would like to ask you if, uh, in order to have uh, real creativity, uh, it would be necessary an architecture like uh, Jacques Pitrat architecture. That means, uh, well, this is also related with multi agent systems because, because um, this need a, a control architecture, a generative architecture, a, a critics uh, in order to. Uh, uh, to say something about the generation, and then uh, some kind of long time goals or objectives in order to see if the solutions are okay or not. So uh, uh, it is necessary to, to mix. Well, uh, learning component will be important, but will be a, a component. Uh, the, the other component that generation, like try to optimize solutions or like to uh, to uh, think about and um, this the, the work also uh, that you mentioned that uh, uh, the machine works with uh, real creators but in order to to generate better solutions but but also the machine can learn the process on how these human creators uh, select uh, solution and discard solution also Yes. So I don't know if uh, there are words in, that, in this direction or not, because all the focus now is learning, 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 and in fact, learning is is, is interesting. But in fact, it's a component, and in creativity, I think more because I don't think that the music created by by these programs. Could be considered as real creation because creation is is something new. If not, it's innovation. Is uh, just just like painting the house or packaging the products, but it's not. It is not creation. <laughs> well. So no, thanks, thanks, uh, Francisco, for your your your, your point, and uh, it's a very important point. The issue of of feedback, actually, because. Uh, uh, 
the 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 I because I focused here on uh, on deep learning, it's based on this this kind of technique, as opposed to for sort of reinforcement learning, where there's 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 a a, a, a feedback from uh, from the system to 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 say exactly if it's if it's the value of the of the decision of the action, and from that the the agent learns, and uh, there there are some. Uh, systems actually uh, using reinforcement learning and combining also combining reinforcement learning and deep learning uh, but the, the, this issue is very important as you mentioned of the the, the feedback from the at first uh, uh, from the musicians because he said he, he, he discards for instance some uh, some samples or on what basis but the the the, the uh, right now uh, the system don't don't he, he learned in a way, in a static way, to, to, to build his model, but it doesn't work f from the interaction from, with, the, with the musician. Where he compete, and there are some systems which, who start to, to do this exactly, to learn to, to how the music, a musician proceeds and which music. The, 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 the long, <laughs> the growl, the, the future, future would be the system, uh, the, the computer itself, to be able to 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 self evaluate uh, uh, is uh, the music is produced the creation and not on our grounds that is on our uh, aesthetical model which is kind of that we can impose to the machine for reinforcement learning or, or some some critic there are some system which have ex exactly uh, some artificial critic uh, but which gives some uh, gives some input to the to the system. So, but in in the most of time, the artificial critique is programmed by hand. I mean, by hand, not by hand, but is from a, from a, a human uh, 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 musician or artist. I mean, a curator. And uh, so, uh, uh, the the ideal would be the machine itself to construct its own aesthetical model, which could be. Of course, not uh, equal to ours, <laughs> and that would be very interesting to see what what kind of aesthetical model the machine will uh, will actually uh, would, would 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 construct. But uh, but again, and you you mentioned uh, multi-agent systems, and there are some interesting uh, uh, experiment uh, systems with uh, jazz improvisation. With uh, there's not just one system, one agent. Uh, uh, but they both learn from a corpus in a static way, but also in an interactive way, and they adapt. That is, they adapt to, uh, for instance, when uh, when there is one uh, starting to uh, improvise, it will, of course, adapt to the harmony uh, created by the, the other one. And what's interesting is that also wh who takes the lead? And for instance, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a kind of trick, but I guess interesting, it's a system named the AMS, and uh, and uh, by uh, Mac Mac and uh, I forgot that. but anyway, and uh, great system and they they use for instance the 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 which is a, sp a simple but interesting idea trick. Uh, they use the the actually the um, the confidence of uh, the the generation that is the the, the probability of uh, of uh, of um, the, the auto evaluation uh, actually or confidence for the what he generated to be able to see if his he, he, uh, the agent thinks is uh, he, he can become a leader or, or, or the opposite he leaves the, the other being the, being the leader in order to build up some kind of interaction actually and uh, uh, between the, the the different agents so right now most of the systems are, are single. I mean, they're, they're just one, and they start to interact with human beings. But it uh, would be interesting to see more uh, collaborative systems. So there's still a lot of, lot of things to do, <laughs> and lots of uh, interesting ideas and uh, issues. We have a question from the audience. Can you show, Marisa? So, do you know if the literature covers usage of same supervised learning to replace manual human validation? Because manual human validation might be expensive. 
Ah, yes. Uh, actually, no. I, I, I should say I, I, I haven't seen uh, semi-supervised uh, learning techniques, but th there's so much, the literature is growing so much and there's so much. So probably it's, uh, there's, I haven't seen, uh, I haven't seen yet. And when, when uh, the book, I wrote the book, the, I, I didn't see, uh, uh, yes. Of course, the, this issue of service supervised learning is interesting in, a, in most of the, in most of the, 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 because deep learning for classification and usually it works, it works with uh, the information about the, 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 the classes that is uh, the tags actually about the, the data. And for most of the information we don't have, but for generation actually, we don't, we don't we don't need this so in a way we we uh, it's we use uh, we use uh, either uh, um, prediction or, or classic usually classification to generate that is uh, between the possible nodes but uh, you uh, it's not a standard way of doing a classification where the, the interest of you using a semi-supervisor actually i uh i'm sorry i i'm a bit lost how uh, how to answer the question i think it's uh it's unnecessary but depending on the way you you you, you generate actually because as i said but i didn't get into the details you have uh, you have various way of uh, of uh, strategies for for generation so actually uh, in, in in yeah and the, the 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 examples that you that you are using so i'm still yeah i'm still not sure how to answer your question actually but i i, I we have to think about it no, I we, didn't, we, I didn't we are far from the time because it, okay. it should be okay. one hour and we are one hour and 26 minutes so thank okay. you very much for your wonderful presentation. It, this is, you know, it's a sincere thanks for you. Thank you very much. Marisa, I, I, I want to announce our next, next invitee. Our next invitee is Professor Luis Correa from Universidade de Lisboa. He's going to talk about biological traits interaction with human threats to drive extinction. So it's a very... Uh, exciting topic, and I hope to see everybody here July 5th. It's kind of very 2 p.m. a Brazilian time. So, see you in two weeks. Thank very you good. very much, Jean Pierre. It was an amazing presentation. Bye bye. Thanks a lot and again. And, uh, bye bye, and see you. For, for I, I want to see you in Cartagena. Okay. <laughs>